So I've never recorded a video like this, and this is probably the stupidest video I've ever recorded. More stupid than rebuilding the Toronto Maple Leafs and Montreal Canadiens for 25 years. We're going to rebuild this team right here, but we're doing it strictly through the draft. This is going to be a drafting only rebuild. How am I going to turn a team of the lowest overall free agents into Stanley Cup champions strictly through drafting? I have no clue. And when I say we're doing this through the draft, I mean the only players that are ever going to play any minutes for this team are players that I draft myself. I'm allowed to trade players I've drafted and draft picks I have in order to get more draft picks, but I can't trade my drafted players and my picks away for players. I only can trade them for more draft picks so every single player you see in today's video is going to be drafted by me this is a very dumb video but you know what we're doing it for the culture so obviously i have an incredible plan here and that plan is going to work out very well for this team we're just going to tank for like eight years in a row and ideally pick up like nine generational players somehow we're going to pick up nine generational players in eight drafts i don't know how we're going to do it but we're going to do it also, while the season simulates here and we lose every single game, this is how many subscribers I have. I want to try to hit 62,000 by the end of the month, so if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Also, thank you on helping us pass the Detroit Red Wings, because we finally did that. Also, I just thought about it right now. I know I said at the beginning of this video, the only players playing minutes for this team will be the ones I draft. That's actually a lie, because we did have to pick up the worst overall free agents. And then after this draft, even if I signed every single player and put them on a roster, we still wouldn't have enough players. So in free agency, I am just going to sign the lowest overall players to fill out our team. Thought I'd clarify that because I just thought about that while the season was simulating. Also, we won four games this season. No point in looking at the standings. I know for a fact we're dead last. So I just wanted to give a shout out to the Vancouver Canucks on beating the Toronto Maple Leafs in the Stanley Cup final. So not only did Vancouver win the Stanley Cup in the simulation, but Toronto made it to the Stanley Cup final. If that's not the most unrealistic Stanley Cup final of all time, I don't know what is. But we know for a fact that this team sucked here. We're going to be getting the first overall pick and ideally we're getting a franchise potential player somehow we dropped the three i had a feeling that was going to happen but you know what we just have to accept it so with the very first selection in this rebuild Caden lindstrom you're gonna be one of the pieces we build around you're the first guy we're bringing to this team there's no doubt about it we're getting a medium elite potential right off the bat here i'm going to give you another season to develop in the chl but the other reason i'm doing that is i want to make sure this team loses every single game because we gotta get the number one overall pick next year we need to bring in a franchise potential player and more likely once we bring in a franchise potential player we're going to be trading them away because their trade value is going to be so incredibly high. We could probably trade them for four first round picks. And I think four first round picks would be more valuable than one franchise potential player, barring where those first round picks end up, of course. Now, I'm probably not going to show every single draft pick, but I will show medium league potential players, top four potential players, and top six potential players. So a guy like Zether, he's going to be great for us. 34th overall pick, he has top six potential. I went off the board a little bit with this selection, about 20 picks off the board, but we are getting a medium top six potential player. He's a 49 over overall so it's going to take a handful of years for him to develop but he could potentially turn to a decent player for us so the draft picks keep on coming in we keep on getting solid players this one's gonna have medium top four potential the scouting was inaccurate on him they said medium lead potential but when i see medium lead potential i gotta take a swing on it and that's exactly what we're gonna be doing right here ideally this guy is medium lead potential the odds are very against it though but i will take medium top six now the odds of us getting a really good player this late in the draft is very unlikely so our 166th overall and our 199th are going to be sent over to the arizona coyotes and we're going to pick up a future third round pick when it comes to drafting we got to make sure that every single season we're bringing in guys with pretty good potential we can't be wasting any picks on bottom six guys or ahl potential players now i'm gonna to have to spend a good minute here just signing the worst overall players we're gonna be bringing 51 52 53 overall players to this team yeah we're gonna be bad we're probably gonna be even worse than last season but on top of that there is one thing that we have to consider here do we need nhl and ahl scouts because if we can't trade for nhl players and we can't trade for ahl players what value are those guys actually bringing to the team so do i just sign like the usa hockey scouts the chl hockey scouts russian nordic european scouts i think those are the only guys going to be bringing to the team nhl and ahl scouts honestly seem a bit pointless all right so you know what we got a pretty solid core here i mean a 58 overall and a 59 lean the way i mean i think we're in a pretty solid position here the defensive core is pretty strong like a 55 overall could be the guy for us and then the goaltending numbers i'm expecting them to be numbers they're going to be numbers indeed with a 53 and a 
52 in between the pipes. So I'm really hoping that our scouts don't miss on a single prospect because we only have scouts for prospects. We have no scouts for NHL players, no scouts for AHL players. These boys better cook. Then again, the thing I do have to remember is their C overalls. So I can't really expect a C overall to be finding gems late in the draft. All right, so we might as well just check in to see what's happening during the postseason. The Detroit Red Wings are going to be taking down the Minnesota Wild in a seven game series. We didn't win a single game the entire season. However, we did lose one game in overtime. If you lost to us in overtime, you should abandon your franchise. Ain't no way we just got the third overall pick once again. We're really getting screwed early on in this video. Things better turn around real quick here though. Cause I'm not accepting this. No, but real talk, things like this, you just hate to see. We could have got a medium franchise potential player, but instead we're gonna be rocking with Gustavo Hood. Now Gustavo Hood, that is an elite name and you're gonna be an elite player. Now for being completely honest with ourselves though, does it actually make sense to draft Gustavo Hood? Yes, it does. I don't know why I'm even contemplating this. Gustavo Hood, welcome to the team. 79 overall, two way forward. You're gonna be a great player for us. All right, so I wanna move up four selections in the draft here. I wanna get another pick in the first round. So the 34th and the 199th overall are going to be sent over to the Columbus Blue Jackets. We got another pick in the first round here, but this could potentially be a massive pickup for us. Now, the reason I traded up for the 30th overall pick is so we can select this guy right here. There's a very good chance that he's going to have medium lead potential. We just have to pray he does. Unfortunately, he doesn't. Medium top six. But you know what? We didn't really have to give up too much. So medium top six, I guess I'll take it. Now, this is actually going to be a big time player for us. Medium lead potential. He's a 51 overall two-way forward. We weren't able to get a medium lead potential player with that last pick, but we are going to be picking one up here. And with our next selection, just two draft picks later, we're getting another elite potential player. Unfortunately, this one only has low lead potential. So he's not even going to have a lot of trade value, even if he develops. Now, when it comes to making trades in this video, we got to make sure that we're not giving up too much. But I feel like two fourth rounders, a fifth and a sixth over to the boss and Bruins in order to get a first round pick is definitely worth it. I'm saying that over. They're going to be saying no. I'll include a third rounder in here, but I'm taking out the fourth because I don't want to give up too many draft picks here. All the draft picks we have left this season aren't going to turn into anything special. And this first rounder, you never know what's going to happen. All right, so we messed up big time because this was the guy I was planning on drafting in this last draft, but I completely forgot about him, Gabriel Dagg. And the reason I wanted to draft him is I know for a fact he always turns into an elite potential goaltender. The odds of us getting an elite potential goaltender through the draft, I mean, it's very possible, but that medium elite potential player actually turning into an elite goaltender doesn't happen very often. So yeah, we already screwed up and we're only two seasons in. Great job, me. So the plan is to go one more season here where we just run with the lowest overall players. And then after this season, we're gonna bring in some of those rookies that we've drafted. I wanna give them one more year to develop, but I also don't really wanna be paying them money right now because like I'm gonna be giving you money and we're not going to be a competitive team in the slightest. I mean, we're not going to be a competitive team next season, so maybe I just bring them on a year sooner. All right, so the team's slowly going to start getting better here. Gustavo Hood and Kane Lindstrom are both jumping into the lineup. Lindstrom's up to an 80. Gustavo Hood's going to be starting at a 79 overall. We have to understand that this team is still going to be bad. Like, we're going to be bad for like a good decade. But after that decade, once we put all these rookies into the lineup, we might not be too bad. We might not be good, but I mean, eventually we're going to become a Stanley Cup team. But that process is going to take a while. So we have another season of tanking to begin here. Ideally, we win zero games, but you know what? I think we might be able to win one. Kane Lindstrom and Gustav are going to be putting up some good numbers here. I mean, we're winning three games max, maybe four if we're lucky. But yeah, give us the first overall pick this time. Okay, so obviously we weren't a good team, but we did win one game this season. We beat the New Jersey Devils. No, nah, they should be absolutely ashamed of themselves. We also have some other good news. Boston didn't make the playoffs, so we're going to have two lottery picks here. Now that we got some actual players in the lineup, we might as well check out their stats. Caitlin Lidstrom, he's picking up 54 points this season, 14 goals, 40 helpers, and the Gustavo Hood, a pretty solid season, 29 goals, 23 helpers, 52 points, a great start to these young guys' careers. Now, I actually really don't care who wins the Stanley Cup. I just want us to get the first overall pick, and then I want the Boston Bruins to get the second overall pick. I want to get two great players here. So the Vancouver Canucks have now won two Stanley Cups in this video. I don't even know what's going on, but here we are heading to the draft lottery results give us the first overall pick and do not screw us we dropped to three again ain't no way we have dropped to three three straight years in a row at this point it's rigged also boston's picked a 17th overall i mean that's not too bad i guess no at this point the game just hates me we could have had two franchise potential players in a row also did the cpu not do any scouting here like what are we doing we literally only have scouts for prospects. We're not scouting a single NHL player and y'all still didn't get three of the four top guys. Also, I'm not doing the scouting myself. I left that for the CPU because I cannot be bothered every two weeks to check in on the scouts. I'm just going to assume that they can do their job. 
apparently they can't so let the draft begin here i think we're going to start with morin because we are going to need a defenseman at some point and i think he can be a fantastic defenseman for us medium elite potential 77 overall he's not going to be the only elite potential player we're getting here though we're going to make a lot of great selections and the next great selection could potentially be coming here because there is a good chance that this guy has medium elite potential 18th overall we're going to go off the board by one pick unfortunately it's not working out for us we are getting a 64 overall who has top six potential i mean i'll still take it top six potential he could develop into something so this is the second straight draft pick we're getting screwed on the last two should have been mediumly potential players but i guess this guy's gonna have top six potential i mean i can't really complain about top six potential but when you think you're getting a medium lead potential player, you can be a bit mad about it. All right, so similar to the last draft, once we get past the 100th overall range, there's nothing really that great available. So I'm sending all of this over to the Arizona Coyotes, and we're going to try to get their first round pick for next season. They're going to be saying no here, but I think a third rounder would be enough to get this deal done. We actually might not have to include that seventh rounder, so I'm going to take it out. We're sending that over. They're saying no. Maybe we do need the seventh rounder. So all of this sent over to the Arizona Coyotes, and we're getting their first round pick for next season. So the team's slowly coming together here. Lindstrom, 86 overall. Gustavo Hood, he's an 87. Zether, he's an 82. And we do have one decent defenseman. Never mind. No, we don't. I didn't sign him. Let me go ahead and sign him real quick. Actually, I take that back. I don't want to sign him. I want to give him one more season to develop in the CHL or overseas, wherever he is. We're giving him one more year. We're going to be rocking with this first line right here. The rest of the team's pretty cooked. But you know what? We're headed in the right direction. I'm going to be completely honest, I underestimated how long this video was going to take. Now, I'm happy to say the progression of this team is actually surprising me. We surpassed the 10 win mark this season. The fact that this team right here just won 10 games makes absolutely no sense, but the scoring on this team, incredible from our top players. Now, I don't know why I'm actually gassing it up that much because Lidstrom was below a point of game, 78 points. Hood was also below a point of game, 75. But Zether, I was not expecting this much from you. 68 points here, 22 goals, 46 assists. You were that guy this season. I mean, you weren't necessarily that guy because there's two players better than you. But hey, both these guys developed a ton of X factors. They're going to be even better next season. But we also are going to have to pay these two guys right here. And that's going to cost us a bag. Meanwhile, it looks like the Toronto Maple Leafs made it back to the Stanley Cup final once again as a wildcard team. But this time, they're going to be losing to the Edmonton Oilers, not the Vancouver Canucks. So once again, Toronto folding in the postseason seems realistic. Now, whatever happens here, we better not drop outside the first overall pick. We got to get it. We dropped a three again. This is rigged. And you know what's going to happen? The guy that's going first overall is probably going to going to have high franchise potential the first high franchise potential we've seen in a very long time like normally when rookies come in they don't have high franchise potential it's always medium franchise this guy right here i can guarantee you high franchise potential he's entering the league as a 95 overall we're getting screwed here Okay, he is medium elite, but you get the point. We keep on getting screwed and it's getting a bit ridiculous. All right, so not much thoughts going into this selection right here. We're going to be selecting this centerman. He's got medium elite potential. We actually do need another centerman, so this guy's going to help a lot. Medium elite potential, two-way forward. We actually need an elite sniper. I don't know why I drafted this guy. But then again, we could trade him away. We might do that. Also, I don't know why I said we need another center. We actually need every position but center. Shout out to the Arizona Coyotes who gave us the 19th overall pick. And with the 19th overall, we're going to be securing another medium elite potential player. He's only a 63 overall, but hey, he's got tons of time to develop. And let's just keep on bringing the elite potential players in with the 34th overall, a low elite potential playmaker. However, we do have to stop drafting centers. We have way too many of them. And I'm happy to say with the 100th overall pick, we found our goaltender. It's going to be this man right here. I'm eventually going to learn his name. 47 overall, medium lead potential. He's got a long ways to go to become our goaltender for the future. But you know what? He's got that potential. You never know what's going to happen. He could be the guy. All right, so I'm actually willing to trade this prospect away right here. He's a 66 overall, 20 years old. And I honestly don't think he's going to really turn into too much. So I'm going to ship him over to the Buffalo Sabres. And we're going to get their first round pick for next season. Unfortunately, they are going to be saying no here. But maybe a fourth rounder can be the difference. So this package sent over to Buffalo. And we're getting this deal done. Now, ideally, we can turn that first round pick into an elite potential player. So of course, stick on the ice as a clown like usual and he had his mic muted. But I remember the contract we gave these guys. Kane Lindstrom, we're gonna be locking you down long term here. Eight years at 8.5 million. And then Hood, we're gonna be keeping you around long term as well. 10.2 for the next eight. These are two hefty contracts and it's definitely not gonna be easy on this team because Zether, he's gonna want a big bag next season as well. He's probably gonna be looking for seven, eight million dollars. We're eventually gonna have to trade some of these guys away because we're just not gonna have the money for all these top players. Now the team is coming together here. 87 overall 88 overall 86 on the first line the first line is basically set for the future i mean it's not going to be these three guys we are going to bring other players in but we have a good foundation 
We also have some solid guys on the second line. We got Timonen, Kulshaw, Raymond. These are three guys that have the potential to develop into fantastic players, especially Raymond here, mediumly potential, 64 overall. I mean, right now things aren't looking good for him, but hey, we're going to give him a lot of reps here and he's going to develop. One aspect we are lacking in is goaltending and defense. We've only drafted one goaltender so far. He has mediumly potential, but he's like a 46 overall. It's going to take a handful of years for him to develop. Defensively, Morin's the only solid guy we've got so far, mediumly potential, 78 overall. He's going to develop into an absolute superstar but we still have to fill out the rest of these holes right here so as we know the tank continues here we're going to drop from one to three once again we're going to get the third overall pick and we're going to miss out on a franchise potential star we already know how it works okay so this isn't really ideal a two win season we went from 10 wins to two maybe this team isn't headed in the right direction maybe i just got my hopes up i mean gustavo hood did pick up 82 points in 82 games so we can celebrate that 43 goals 39 assists Caden lindstrom he had a great season as well 78 points z 71 morin he's picking up 44 points here 79 overall i was kind of hoping he would jump up to an 80 but you know what i'll definitely take it we can't forget about kula show though 20 goals 23 assists for 43 points not too bad of a season from him however i do have some bad news arizona's gonna be winning the stanley cup taking on the boston bruins but good thing we didn't trade for either of those first round picks we traded for buffaloes and where was buffalo losing in the conference finals to boston so yeah that pick's not gonna have much value okay so we can't drop to the third overall pick once again eventually we do have to get the first overall this is stupid this is honestly so dumb that might be five seasons in a row now that we've dropped from one to three five years in a row i don't think it's five it might be four i don't know it's happened way too often though now if i see a franchise potential player here i'm gonna lose my mind I am so happy, but what also annoys me, it was the defenseman that got drafted first overall. We could have used that defenseman. Now, it's not the end of the world that the top two picks were both defensemen, because the top five projected are all defensemen. However, I think I'm going to go with the guy projected fourth overall. I think that could be the move for us. And the reason I say that, he's a defensive defenseman, and that's actually what we need. It's going to be hard to come by good defensive defensemen. So this 71 overall, that's definitely the pickup. Even though this guy is four overalls higher, he's a defensive defenseman, and that's what we want. So the second round potentially has a ton of amazing players. So I want to trade our first round pick into a second rounder. But in the process, I also want to pick up a third rounder from the Seattle Kraken. So a first round pick, which is the 31st overall and a future sixth rounder over to the Kraken. Is that going to be enough to get this deal done? Now we just have to hope that these guys have elite potential. All right, so we got completely scammed here. Not only was this guy a gem, but he was projected to have medium leap potential, semi-accurate scouting. I thought this was a guaranteed slam dunk, but nope. We got a 61 overall grinder. That is tough. But you know what? Shooter shoot here. And we have another guy that could potentially have medium leap potential. I mean, this one, not guaranteed. Inaccurate scouting. But you know what? Shooter shoot. And that's exactly what we do here. Okay, we got top nine potential. I hate my life. All right, so this is going to be a massive swing here. But this guy's a gem. Projected to have AHL top six potential. But he's a gem. He's probably going to be a good player. Low top six, definitely not worth that selection. It might have taken a while, but we finally got our second goaltender in the video. 59 overall with medium leap potential. More than likely, he's going to be the starter for us in two seasons, maybe even three. But hey, we got two medium leap potential goaltenders. They're going to be the future of this team. We at least have our goaltending core locked down. Now we just got to fill out that defense. Because forward wise, we actually should be good. So I'm not guaranteed anything good in the sixth and seventh round here. So we're just going to trade them over to Carolina and pick up a future third round pick. So this is basically part two of the plan outside of bringing in elite potential players we got to sign guys to incredible contracts so chuburov eight years at 1.4 million that might not make sense for a 71 overall right now but when you develop into an 84 overall player that contract's gonna make a lot of sense z throw on the other hand i'm not really willing to commit money to you right now you want 6.2 for two years i want to do an eight-year deal with you i'm going to be honest i don't think you're worth nine million dollars so we're going to hold off on that extension right now but eventually we will lock you down long term and if we don't we'll just trade you away for a draft pick so this season marks something very special Almost the entire forward core here has been drafted by our team. The only player that hasn't, this man right here. He was undrafted. We signed him in free agency. He was one of the lowest overall players. But outside of him, every other player here, we've drafted. So we've drafted an entire forward core. Defensively, I think we have a majority of this defensive core drafted by our team. Three of the six players have been drafted by us, so that's not too bad. However, when it comes to goaltending, the two elite potential players we've drafted, I haven't signed yet. I've been giving them a bit more time to develop. But next season, I'm going to sign both of them, and then we're going to have the goaltending position locked down. Now, NHL 24. Four, do not screw me and give me a franchise potential player we are too deep into this rebuild to not have one first overall pick it's actually 
wild when you think about it. We are yet to get one player that has franchise potential, and we're yet to get one player drafted first overall because we never get the first overall pick. We just keep on getting screwed. All right, so after last season's complete disappointment, I have some great news. Although we are still last place in the entire league, 21 wins. A 21 win season, we were only nine wins shy of the San Jose Sharks. How this team is still bad in the year 2029, I have no clue. Like seriously, how are y'all still terrible? The young guys continue to improve here. Kane Lindstrom, 82 points. Gustavo Hood, he's picking up 79. Zether's picking up 64. We actually should go ahead and give him an extension. I actually forgot to do that. Meanwhile, the rest of these guys can't really complain with the production. The reason your plus minuses aren't looking good, like you're still low overalls. We have 74 overalls in the lineup. It's not going to look good no matter what. Also, I was about to check our goaltending, but I forgot we don't have to. So I am fully prepared for this team to somehow drop from one to three once again. Honestly, it's actually ridiculous that's happened this many times in a row if it happens once again here that's going to be five straight years where we've dropped from one to three so it's been four in a row already we better get the number one overall it's actually rigged it has to be that's five years in a row one to three I don't even know what to say. I really don't know what to say. It has to be rigged at this point. Ain't no way we've gone five straight years dropping from one to three. I'm just agitated at this point. Like it's actually starting to annoy me. And now it's time for us to watch the first overall pick become a franchise potential player. And just like that, Detroit, congratulations. Never mind, he's got medium lead potential. But you know what? He's still got medium lead potential. He's still an AD overall. St. Louis is going to Dallas. We could have brought St. Louis here or St. Louis doesn't really matter. I'm calling him St. Louis. Now, who are we going to be picking? The guy that our scouts didn't scout. I don't know why we didn't do any scouting on this guy, but he's a 79 overall medium lead potential. He'll jump into the lineup next season, but we literally have 20 scouts to scout prospects coming in. And for some reason, we didn't scout the third overall. Once again, I have the CPU doing all the scouting, but even still, you would think they would scout the top 10 players considering we're the worst team in the entire league. So this draft right now is not looking nice in the slightest. So a first round pick from the Boston Bruins might be worth these three first round picks right here. I don't know why I said three first round picks, three third round picks. We got our first round pick. And then that's not the only trade we're doing here. We're also picking up the Buffalo Sabres first round pick. We're going to pray that both Buffalo and Boston completely fall apart and we can get some top five picks because I can guarantee you right now, I can guarantee you right now, we're not getting the first overall with our pick. It has to come from some other team. So it looks like waiting till the re-sign phase is working out for this team because Zether, we're going to begin you on a long-term deal at 7.2 million. That's actually a good contract I can live with. So unfortunately, Zether is actually going to be saying no to that extension we gave him, but I think 7.7 .7 million will be enough to get him on the team so here we go 7.7 for the next eight years the main reason he's saying no is he doesn't want to do eight years i think we're gonna to have to give him exactly what he wants if we're doing eight years how about we just do seven years though i can do seven years at 7.5 million that's actually a pretty solid contract for you so here you go actually i'll just give you 7.8 for the next seven so zether 7.8 for the next seven years you're going to accept this contract we're going to be keeping you around you're one of our best players and this team's going to see some massive upgrades heading into next season i can tell you that right now so we've got through the re-sign phase and we've already began next season but now we have to go some big time extensions and i can guarantee some of these guys are going to want bags so cool off we're going to start with you it's going to be seven million for the next eight years more i already knew you were going to want a bag so here's 8.6 for the next eight years that's a big time deal as well tim and then we're going to be locking you down long term in an amazing deal 1.45 for the next eight and then raymond i'm hoping i can lock you down to something similar to that we're going to do eight years but it's going to cost us a bit more we're going to do 6.4 million actually make that 6.5 million for the next eight years you got medium leap potential you're eventually going to live up to the hype now i'm happy to say this is going to be the first season where we have a forward core of all players drafted by me. Lindstrom, Hood, Kuleshoff, they're going to be banned the first line. Our second line's got some decent players. Zeth is going to be leading the way though. 86 overall. He's got some X factors. The bottom six isn't necessarily bad. You know, we got some good young developing guys, but I'm not too convinced in it yet. Defensively, we got ourselves a big three here. That's going to be Charlie Ennis, Morin, and Tuco. Three great defensemen that all have medium elite potential. They're going to develop into some superstars. And on top of that, we got some fantastic goaltenders. And Bickle's definitely going to be the guy for us at 20 years old he's already turned into a 72 overall he's got medium lead potential but even if he doesn't we got omar backing him up a 66 overall he's got medium lead potential as well the sky's the limit for these two guys right here so i think the plan is one more year of tanking and then we're going to start competing for playoff positions i don't think we're going to make the playoffs next year we might fight for a wild card spot but you know what this team's getting pretty close so i don't want to gas this team up we're not sitting in a playoff spot but we're not necessarily that far away 23rd in the entire league with a 30 32 and 3 record we're six points out 
of a wild card spot right now. This team knows how to score goals. Unfortunately, we don't know how to play defense in the slightest. We kind of knew that heading into this season, but the fact that we're sitting 23rd in the entire league right now, that's a good sign. And it's a great sign considering this team's going to keep on getting better. Hood, he's got 63 points so far. Kulshov, he's got 60. Zether's got 56. Lindstrom's got 54. This team knows how to pick up goals, and they're actually doing a great job of that. The goaltending numbers, I'm not expecting them to be good. We literally have a 73 overall and a 66. Not only do the goaltenders have tons of time to develop, but so do the defense. We're going to keep on getting better, and we got a couple draft picks we can work with. We're going to be getting some more elite prospects. Now, as much of a surprise to say that this team absolutely collapsed after the trade deadline, we're going to be finishing 30th here with a 35, 43, and 4 record. But you know what? We couldn't get the first overall pick when we finished dead last in the entire league. Maybe we can now. The scoring's looking pretty decent for the team so far. Hood, he's got 85 points. Lindstrom, 75. Kulshoff, he's got 74 points. Zether's got 70 himself. Well, the goaltending numbers, as I said, I'm not expecting them to be good right now. Now, I don't really recall if we traded for first round picks. For some reason, I think we did. And I think we got the Buffalo Sabres and the Boston Bruins. So yeah, both of those teams made the conference finals. They're not having any value. But one pick that is going to have a ton of value is our pick right here. And it better turn into the first overall. I'm done getting screwed. Okay, we dropped to five. Seems about right all right so the prospect that i really want is going fourth overall we have the fifth overall pick so hopefully a fifth round pick is going to be enough for us to jump from five to four they're going to be saying no but a seventh rounder will make the difference this is actually a great package right here although this guy's not going to be helping us a ton right now he's going to develop into a great player for us so that being said klaxon welcome to the team we need another left defenseman and you're going to fill that role for us you're actually a 79 overall already so you actually will be helping the team right now now we did have two more picks in the first round this guy we're not going to talk about him but we will We'll talk about this player right here low lead potential 64 overall power forward i'm not really sure if he's gonna be jumping into the lineup because i think we're gonna be winning a stanley cup pretty quick i don't know why i'm saying the expectation so high we are not winning a stanley cup anytime soon but you know what a man can dream so i'm happy to say we are going to get multiple medium lead potential players in this draft as we're picking up sweat a 56 overall goaltender who has medium lead potential that's the most important thing so we really only have one player that we have to bring back here and it's going to be cox we're doing 1.2 for the next eight years honestly i think that's a bad signing right there he's a 70 overall 24 years old he's not going to develop into too much now with the rest of these guys here these were the last guys i signed from free agency all these guys are going to be walking. This is back when we only had like two, three players under the roster. And I would sign people with the three-year deals to play on the team. All these remaining guys were from those free agent signings. But you know what? We don't need them anymore. We've got a team here. So we've got through another season. And that means that's another year of deals to give out. And Dietz is actually going to be doing a pretty solid deal with us. We're doing 6.8 for the next eight years. He's a top player for us. 86 overall at 20 years old. He's going to be a superstar. And that's not going to be the only big time deal we do here. Because Volchenkov, I'm giving you five years at 6.5 million. That's an okay deal for an 83 overall. I'm, I'm kind of curious to see what your progression is going to be like over the next couple of years. That's why I don't want to do too many years. And then Perez Hogan, we're also going to be doing a long-term deal with you. Ideally, we can do the cheap eight-year deal. I mean, this isn't necessarily cheap, but we can do 3.2 for the next eight. And Qdobin, we're going to keep on doing deals. We can definitely get a cheap deal done with you. Eight years at 1.5. Now, I don't expect this team right here to be making the playoffs. But I mean, I think we're going to be pretty close. 89 overall Lidstrom, 91 overall Hood, and then 88 overall Kulshoff. The second line's looking pretty solid. I mean, 83 and 87 and 82, while the bottom six, it could definitely be a lot worse, although we definitely need some more 80 overalls here. Defensively, our top four, I have no issue with whatsoever. A bunch of young guys are going to continue to get better. However, that third pairing still needs a bunch of work. We got to bring in some more defensemen. And to finish it all off, AJ Bickle, you're definitely the guy for us. 77 overall. You're probably going to be an 82 overall by the beginning of next season, and then I think we'll actually be able to make the playoffs. This season, I think we're going to be pretty close, but I don't think we're quite there yet. Now, what you guys are about to see you're not gonna believe because i don't truly believe it myself the wheeling wizards the team that i constructed have just drafted players sixth in the entire league with a 40 24 and 3 record i'm not gonna lie when i saw that nashville clinched a playoff spot for some reason i thought that meant they were sitting in the wild card and i was so confused how the number one team in the league was sitting in a wild card spot but no they clinched a playoff spot at the trade deadline so they're doing pretty good we're averaging 3.75 goals per game allowing 3.24 the defense still needs to get better but you know what we got a bunch of great defensemen on this team a bunch of great goaltenders and the entire team's going to keep on getting better because they're all young but what's really been 
leading the team is that offense. Kuleshoff, 85 points. Hood, he's got 83. Zether, 70. Lindstrom, 67. This team's looking absolutely fantastic right now, and we got everyone locked down. Meanwhile, the goaltending numbers, Bickle, 34 wins, two shots, a 900 save percentage of 311 goals against. You know what? Those numbers aren't that great. And considering you're a 21-year-old and a 78 overall, I'm not too concerned. You're going to be even better after this season. We're going to go on some stupid playoff run here, maybe make it all the way to the conference finals. But then again, I also wouldn't be overly surprised if we lost in the first round. Anything can really happen. Man. Who would have thought? Fifth in the entire league, a 49-27-6 record. I'm going to be completely honest. We're about eight years into this rebuild. I thought it was going to take us 16 years before we were even competitive. But here we are, fifth in the entire league, 3.82 goals per game, 3.18 allowed. That's actually not that bad of a defense considering what we have. This team might be able to win a Stanley Cup this season. Hood's really holding it down here. 108 points, 38 goals, 70 helpers. Kuleshov, he's got 43 goals, 61 helpers, 104 points. Lidstrom, 87. Z or 83. Bickle's going to be doing his thing in between the pipes. 42 wins, 3 shots, a 901, a 310. Now it's time for us to go on this historic run. Now let the historic postseason run begin here. We got the Carolina Hurricanes in the first round. Surprisingly, we're actually favored in this matchup, but that doesn't mean anything. This is the first time this team's gained any postseason experience. It's going to be a tough hill to climb for us. Ain't no way this team is actually succeeding right now. 3-1 lead here in the postseason, but we're going to blow a 3-0 series lead, aren't we? We're off to game 7. Never mind, we're going to be closing out in game six so we're making the second round so we've somehow made it to the second round here i don't even know how that's possible but since we've made it this far we might as well win and nashville got swept in the first round to the blackhawks sucks to suck it's time for the wheeling wizards to win also i did not know that wheeling was an actual place it's in west virginia yeah, so shout out to those who live in Wheeling. So we've been going back and forth with the New Jersey Devils. We got ourselves a tie series. So game five is going to be a massive one. Who's going to be taking the lead? It looks like we will be. Are we going to be closing this out in game six and advancing to the next round? Unfortunately not. We're off to game seven. So here we go. Game seven of the second round. Are we going to be advancing to the conference finals? We're going to be exchanging goals in the first period. The Devils are going to be taking the lead, entering the third though. They're picking up two goals in the second. We've got to mark some crazy comeback here. And unfortunately, that's not going to be happening. Jordan Gavin's going to pick up the empty netter. And we're going to be falling 4-1 to in Game 7. Considering what this team was at the beginning of the season, I did not think we were going to make the playoffs, let alone top 5 in the entire league. So this is a win right here. Kuleshov, 14 points. Can't complain about that. Hood's got 13. Lindstrom, 12. This team's still pretty young. Like, they're going to keep on getting better. The goaltending numbers, I'm not going to judge Bickle on these. But, I mean, these are pretty solid. A 9, 10, a 287. And you're still a 79 overall. I was kind of hoping you'd be up to an 80. But you know what? After you get that offseason progression, we're going to be sitting all right. So with the success we saw this season... Stick on the ice statements being dropped right now. We're winning a Stanley Cup in the next two years. We just finished fifth in the entire league. Everyone's getting better. You can't tell me this team's going to be worse. Okay, so we got to accept the fact that the 26th overall pick is going to take too long to develop. We need the 12th overall. So I'm going to send this package over to the Seattle Kraken. Unfortunately, they're going to be saying no, but we do have some prospects we can work with. Now, one of these prospects right here, 65 overall, 19 years old, he's going to take too long to develop. I'm going to add him into this package. They're still going to be saying no, but now we just have to include a seventh rounder. So this package right here, it's a massive risk, but I think it's going to work out for this team. And the reason we made that trade is because the guy we're acquiring is NHL ready. He's a 77 overall. That's huge for this team. Now we don't have to wait for a couple seasons for this guy to develop. He can jump into the lineup immediately. So I have a plan for next season, but first we have to trade some draft picks away. A third rounder and fourth rounders off to the Dallas Stars for a future second. And then we're going to trade a fifth and sixth rounder over to the Boston Bruins. I mean, I'll remove that prospect because we actually don't really want the prospect. All we want is the draft pick. So a third rounder for these two right here. That's a great deal for us. Here's the plan. If we need one more season because we don't win this year i'm going to trade all those draft picks for the 12th overall or something and get an nhl ready defenseman we'll bring him into the lineup he'll be like a 78 overall that's going to be the difference maker for our team because our forward core is set our goaltending is set all we need to do is improve the defense just a little more now, i'm not necessarily a fan of this deal because mckenzie you're only a 73 overall but we do need a defenseman so here's 1.2 million for the next five now this is one of the off seasons i'm concerned about because i don't know how much money guys like ennis are going to be asking for 10.9 million that's a yikes so we are going to be able to lock you down long term here well it's not really long term five years at 9.5 million that's definitely going to hurt this team when it comes to the cap situation tuco is not going to be too bad though we can do 4.5 for the next five so we're actually getting a pretty solid deal there and then with gagne we're also bringing him back we're doing a three-year deal at 1.7 million 
but I think I got a bit ahead of myself because we do have to bring back a goaltender and Bickle he's not doing us any favors here we're doing 6.5 for the next four years so we do have a couple defensemen on their rookie deals right now that we're not gonna be able to afford next year meanwhile our backup goaltender we can do 800k for the next two now I think we might actually be able to do the impossible this season and win a Stanley Cup of just drafted players Lidstrom Hood Kuleshov they're gonna be the top guys here all 91 overalls the fact that we have three 91 overalls on our first line says a lot about this team I've done a fantastic job drafting I gotta take a lot of credit for this team right here the top six is absolutely phenomenal the bottom six might not be the best in the world but you know what we have a ton of guys here that play their role and that's all we need similar to last season the top four here is looking absolutely spectacular while the third pairing is a bit weak but you know what Ennis and Morin they're gonna be carrying the way 90 overalls each yeah this team's in a great spot meanwhile the gold tending Bickle's up to an 82 overall I would like for him to have a couple x factors but you know what an 82 overall gold tender is definitely better than what we started with last season so there's no reason that we should be worse than last season we're just simulating right to the end of the year because obviously we can't make any trades no point stopping at the trade deadline let's win 60 plus games and then go get ourselves a stanley cup so here we are sitting with the top three in the entire league of course the boston bruins a team that's always dominant the arizona coyotes and then the wheeling wizards one of the greatest franchises of all time 51 wins 27 losses 4 ot losses we're scoring a lot of goals here and the defense not too bad but we still need to fix that third pairing but you never know because with the offense flying like it is we might not need a third pairing Kuleshov he's having an incredible year 105 points Hood's picked up 104 Lidstrom 90 three guys over a point a game you just love to see it and the goaltending numbers that's what I'm most curious about Bickle 43 wins two shots a 902 and a 304 where are you up to when it comes to overall 84 overall so if we're not winning this season we're for sure winning next year but why worry about next season when we have this season right here and we could win a Stanley Cup right here we got the Buffalo Sabres to take on we're the favorite to win this matchup that doesn't happen very often i don't know why i'm even saying that because that literally happened last season our first round matchup but you know what we've never been the one seed before so let's see what happens against the sabers so the sabers are putting up a bigger fight than i was expecting we're heading into game five here with the series all tied up but we're going to be taking game five and ideally we take game six here because i don't want to go to game seven but it looks like that's exactly what's happening and the main reason i didn't want to go to game seven here is last time we went to game seven didn't really go our way we didn't show up in that game i think we only picked up one goal so hopefully we get more than one goal this time around okay we're getting shut out in the first period that's not ideal okay are we really going to go scoreless here that is tough we did pick up one goal so we can celebrate that but man the goal for this postseason was to score more than one goal in game seven and we scored one goal again so the buffalo sabers they're going to go on to win the stanley cup here taking down the vancouver canucks in a six game series we were upset in the first round to the buffalo sabers so the fact that they won a stanley cup i feel a bit better about losing to the eventual champs but you know what we can't be accepting first round exits here we got to bounce back and how are we going to be bouncing back by making moves at the draft now the numbers on this team definitely not that great we've seen better before and the goaltending i already know that's going to be awful actually i take that back bickle was him three wins one shot a 929 to 226 okay we just let him down plain and simple he's up to an 85 overall he'll get some x factors over the offseason but yeah we're winning next season that's a fact okay so there's a franchise potential goaltender projected seventh overall do we just give up like three first round picks get the seventh overall select him and then trade him away and we could probably get some bottom six guys that might be the move when i say trade him away i mean trade him away for more picks because the amount of assets we would give up in order to get him we could definitely get more back okay so we might have one main issue here basically nobody is ready to jump into the nhl this season everyone's at least two years away when it comes to a defenseman so yeah i don't really know how we're going to make this team better i mean ideally we do trade for the eighth overall pick although this guy's not nhl ready he's going to be ready in two years we're going to speed up that process but in saying all that, you know what? I just want to try something like this. The 29th overall, the 56th overall, and a future first round pick for the 7th overall. Okay, we probably didn't have to give up that much, but now we're going to get that franchise potential goaltender. And then I'm going to trade that franchise potential goaltender. So I'm going to draft him right here. He's got franchise potential, 70 overall. I almost want to use this guy as our goaltender. Like this guy actually could be the move for us. It'll take him two seasons to develop, but how much trade value does he have? That's the real question. Because I know for a fact goalies have less trade value, but he actually might might have a fair amount where we could actually trade him away okay this was incredibly smart so now we're about to cook here so we're gonna rock with the goaltender we have it probably makes a lot more sense to keep this medium franchise potential guy but you know what i don't make logical decisions so we're gonna try to pick up three first round picks and a second rounder from the la kings la is not gonna be good next season hypothetically could we get four first round picks and a second i'm gonna offer that over they're saying no if i take the second rounder out could we get a deal like this done 
they're going to say no. What if I give you draft picks? So here's a third rounder from the Boston Bruins. Like I want to get all of these first round picks. That would be absolutely wild if we could somehow pick up four. So two third rounders, a franchise potential goaltender for four first round picks. They're going to be saying no. How about we take one of these first rounders out? So a franchise potential goaltender for three first round picks. Give me a second as well. You know what? I don't want to get completely finessed here. So give me a second rounder as well. Three first round picks. One of them being the eighth overall. This team's going to suck again next season. That pick's going to be valuable. Yeah, we're making good moves out here because now we can draft this defenseman right here it's going to take him a couple years to develop he's a 69 overall but you know what i'm okay with that move right there we're going to give him some time to develop he might be a 75 overall by the time we bring him into the system who needs a franchise potential goaltender when you can get a medium leap potential goaltender 97th overall he's got some trade value we're going to put him into a package next season if we're not winning this season i can guarantee you we win next year because next year we're going to be even better because we're going to have two top five picks all right i wish i was actually recording when i drafted this player because i just paused the recording in between draft picks but this guy right here there was no scouting done on him whatsoever the only thing i knew was he was a gem so i decided to take a risk on him he's got medium leap potential so yeah that's pretty valuable so when it comes to the resign phase we already have everyone locked down we got nine million dollars to work with we're straight so i'm very happy to see we have enough money to bring back clax in here i was a bit concerned but 6.4 million that's going to lock him down for the next couple of years now this is the season we finally bring it home after the years of disappointment it's finally time for the wheeling wizards to win a stanley cup lidstrom hood cool they're gonna be leading the way the second line's looking absolutely fantastic an 88 overall an 86 and another 86 and the bottom six absolutely incredible this season we're getting a plus two boost on the fourth line plus two on the third plus two on the second and a plus three on the first this team's gonna be dominating defensively we're led by ennis we're led by Moore and 290 overalls they both have superstar x factors and to cap it all off the goaltending situation pickles up to an 87 he's going to acquire some x factors this season and then we'll be hoisting a stanley cup so i've done enough talking here it's time for this team to finally live up to their potential and not fold in the postseason we're going to be a top three team there's no doubt about it but whether or not we're going to be able to step up in the postseason we're yet to see so the wheeling wizards are sitting at the top of the league here second to be exact with a 52 24 and six record the offense is flying we knew this was going to happen but the defense might be the best in the entire league tied with the buffalo sabers at 2.88 that makes absolutely no sense considering we don't have a third pairing and with the offense being as elite as it is we got a ton of guys we can rely on here hood's picking up 94 points volchenkov's gonna be picking up 86 kuleshov he's gonna be picking up 86 perez holg in 81 a ton of elite players here that we can rely on of course and in between the pipes bickle he's got some x factors 87 overall 44 wins three shots and 912 and 281 the best season he's ever had and now it's time for us to cap it off with the stanley cup and we got the ottawa centers to match up against in the first round this wizards team right here is a bit different and i don't think teams are ready for us okay those first two games they got me feeling some type of way but we're winning back-to-back -back games right after that we got to make that three straight we can't lose in the first round again here we got to show out in game six that's exactly what's happening now we're off to game seven so game seven's where it matters most we can't be losing in the first round here we've dropped two straight game sevens in a row it can't happen again here it's about to happen again here we're really gonna choke never mind after being down 3-0 in this game we're gonna be scoring four unanswered and we have to continue that into this next period luckily we are we're picking up another two goals here ottawa's not gonna be able to make that comeback and we're gonna be winning this game six to five there's no reason it should have been this close so we've made it to the second round we had a bit of a scare in the first round here but you know what i think that's the only scare we're gonna have in the postseason we're taking on the third seed washington capitals next but they did just sweep the columbus blue jackets so washington's not messing around so after that game seven win we've really been holding it down winning three straight games unfortunately we did drop game number four but we have a 3-1 series lead and we're not going to blow it here we're going to close this series out right we're not blowing a 3-0 series lead we're going to close this out luckily we are in game six and we're off to the conference finals so i was really looking forward to a buffalo sabers matchup in the conference finals but that's not going to be happening here. The Boston Bruins are going to be upsetting them in the second round. So we got the Wheeling Wizards taking on the Boston Bruins and the Vancouver Canucks taking on the Minnesota Wild. I want Vancouver. That team's already won a few Stanley Cups in this video, but I want to be the team that takes them out in the Stanley Cup final. So we've been exchanging games with the Boston Bruins. They've been low scoring ones and this team lives by its offense. So we got to pick that up in game number five here. We're going to be winning three to two. It's another low scoring one, but the offense does have to wake up here. I'm a bit concerned. We're heading into game seven after another low scoring one. The defense is really been showing out here i gotta give respect to that but it's time for us to change that because i want to score a lot of goals here it's time for the wizards to lock in we're going to be exchanging goals in the first period hood's going to be picking up another in the second so we have a 2-1 lead entering the third period here but unfortunately we're not going to be holding on to that lead game seven overtime winners off to the stanley cup final and kuleshov's going to be showing up he's picking up the goal against jeremy swayman and we've made the stanley cup final 
Now we've made the Stanley Cup final, but it's not a joyous day because the Vancouver Canucks are folding in the conference finals. So that means we got to take on the four seeded Minnesota Wild. But then again, Minnesota did make it all the way to the Stanley Cup final. They're a great team here. We can't sleep on them. So it all comes down to this one final series. We have to win four more games. The Minnesota Wild are a pretty solid team, but we're a bit better, averaging six goals per game right now. We're going to ignore this game right here. We're going to ignore this game. We have a 3-2 series lead. We're going to close out in game number six. A nice show from Bickle and the Wheeling Wizards are Stanley Cup champions, a team we constructed only through drafting. No, like it really doesn't make sense that we won a Stanley Cup specifically through drafting and it took us 10 years exactly. Kuleshov, you led the way. 40 points, 16 goals, 24 helpers. Hood, 15 goals, 22 helpers. Lidstrom, 10 goals, 18 helpers. No, they were locked in. The offense on this team was absolutely flying and I know for a fact the goaltending was good. Bickle, 16 wins, 4 shouts, a 923 and a 244. You were the guy. So after going through all that effort to trade for that franchise potential goaltender to get the 8th overall pick in a bunch of future first round picks, we didn't even need any of them because we're Stanley Cup champs. So if you made it to the end of this video, you know what? Comment Lidstrom because he was the very first player we ever drafted on this team. We draw from 1 to 3 in order to draft him and we never got the first overall pick once. We really did this video for 10 seasons and never got the first overall pick once. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a bit tight about that. But you know what? We won a Stanley Cup, so can I really complain? I don't think so.